So thank you, Ms. P, for being here. And we know that you've been with us for 18 years, and we're happy to have you um, on staff as our assistant professor of education and faculty advisor to many groups on campus. And thanks for being with us tonight as part of our Griffins at Home series. It is my pleasure to be here. And so welcome. Welcome to my friends who are there. So we're reading one of my favorite books tonight, Stregonona uh, by Tommy DiPaola. And I love his books. He's got a lot of really good books and he does all the drawings for the books as well. Um, I like Stregonona for a lot of reasons. And as we go through, we'll talk about a little bit wh about why I like Stregonona. So let's start in a little town in Italy. In a town in Calabria, a long time ago, there lived an old lady everyone called Streganona, which meant Grandma Witch. Although all the people in town talked about her in whispers, they all went to see her if they had troubles. Even the priest and the sisters in the convent went because Streganona did have a magic touch. And there's Streganona right down there meeting with all the people who were coming to see her for her magic touch. She could cure a headache with oil and water and a hairpin. She made special potions for the girls who wanted husbands. And she was very good at getting rid of warts. Ooh, yuck. And there she is meeting with all of those people. But Streganona was getting old. And she needed somebody to help her keep her little house and garden. So she put up a sign in the town square. So there she is, there's Streganona, and she's putting up a sign so that she can find somebody to help her around the house. I guess she didn't have Facebook or any of those kinds of things to put up her notices. And Big Anthony, who didn't pay attention, went to see her. Anthony, said Streganona, you must sweep the house and wash the dishes. You must weed the garden and pick the vegetables. You must feed the goat and milk her. And you must fetch the water. For this, I will give you three coins and a place to sleep and food to eat. Oh, grazie, said Big Anthony. The one thing you must never do, said Streganona, is touch the pasta pot. It is very valuable and I don't let anybody touch it. Ah, oh, see, yes, said Big Anthony. So there's Big Anthony talking to Streganona and she's giving him all the rules of this job. And so the days went by, Big Anthony did his work and Streganona met with the people who came to see her for headaches and husbands and warts. Big Anthony had a nice bed to sleep in next to the goat shed and he had food to eat. One evening, when Big Anthony was milking the goat, he heard Streganona singing. Peeking in the window, he saw Streganona standing over her pasta pot. So there's Big Anthony doing all his chores, and there he is, peeking in the window to watch Streganona. Uh-oh, I wonder what he sees. <gasps> she was singing, bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry and it's time to sup. Boil enough pasta to fill me up. And pasta pot bubbled and boiled and was suddenly filled with steaming hot pasta. Then Streganona sang again. Enough, enough pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. How wonderful said Big Anthony. That's a magic pot for sure. So there's Streganona standing over her pot, watching it bubble and boil with pasta. And Streganona called Big Anthony in for supper. But too bad for Big Anthony, because he didn't get to see Streganona blow three kisses mwah, 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 to the magic pasta pot. And there she is. She's blowing her kisses to the pot. There she is with the big pot and blowing her kisses. I wonder what they do. Let's see. 
And this is what happened. The next day, when Big Anthony went to the town square to fetch the water, he told everybody about the pasta pot. And naturally, everybody laughed at him because it sounded so silly. A pot that cooked all by itself? Hmm, I'll bet our moms and our grandmoms and our aunties and our daddies and our grandpops, I'll bet we'd all like a pot that cooked all by itself. Hmm, you better go and confess to the priest, Big Anthony, they said, such a lie. And Big Anthony was angry and that wasn't a very good thing to be. I'll show them, he said to himself. Someday I will get the pasta pot and make it cook and they'll be sorry. Well, that day came sooner than even Big Anthony would have thought because two days later, Streganona said to Big Anthony, Anthony, I must go over the mountain to the next town to see my friend, Strega Amelia. Sweep the house and weed the garden, feed the goat and milk her. And for your lunch, there are some bread and cheese in the cupboard. And remember, don't touch the pasta pot. Oh, yes, yes, Streganona, said Big Anthony. But inside he was thinking, oh, my chance has come. So there's Streganona giving Anthony his orders, telling him what he needs to do. But look at this, he's thinking about the pasta pot. He's all set to go play with that pasta pot. Oh. As soon as Streganona was out of sight, Big Anthony went inside, pulled the pasta pot off the shelf, and put it on the floor. Hmm, let's see if I remember the words, said Big Anthony. And Big Anthony sang, bubble, bubble, pasta pot. Boil me some pasta, nice and hot. I'm hungry, and it's time to sup. Boil enough to fill me up. And sure enough, the pot bubbled and boiled and began to fill up with pasta. And we can see that pot boiling right down there. Aha, said Big Anthony. And he ran to the town square, jumped on the fountain and shouted, everyone get forks and plates and platters and bowls. Pasta for all at Stregadona's house. Big Anthony has made the magic pasta pot work. <gasps> of course, everyone laughed, but they ran home to get their forks and their plates and their platters and their bowls. And sure enough, when they got to Streganona's house, the pasta pot was so full, it began to overflow. And there's all the people arriving at Streganona's house so that they can fill up their plates with some good pasta. Big Anthony was a hero. He scooped out pasta and filled the plates and the platters and the bowls. There was more than enough for all the townspeople, including the priest and the sisters from the convent. And some people came back for two or three helpings, but the pot was never empty. So there's all the people all lined up and there's that pasta pot still quite filled with pasta. Oh, I wonder, maybe they're not eating enough. <gasps> When all had their fill, Big Anthony sang, enough, enough, my pasta pot. I have my pasta nice and hot. So simmer down my pot of clay until I'm hungry another day. But alas, he did not blow. Three kisses. Uh-oh, I wonder what's gonna happen. He went outside and to the applause of the crowd, Big Anthony took a bow. He was so busy listening to the compliments from everybody that he didn't notice that the pasta pot was still bubbling and boiling until a sister from the con convent said, oh, Big Anthony, look! And pasta was pouring out of the pot all over the floor of Streganona's house and was coming out the door. Look at that. Can you imagine pasta boiling out all over your house and then coming out your front door? Oh my God goodness, so much pasta. <gasps> Big Anthony rushed in and shouted the magic words again, but the pot kept bubbling. He took the pot off the floor, but the pasta kept pouring out of it. Oh my gosh, look at all that pasta. Big Anthony grabbed a cover, a lid, and put it on the pot, and he even sat on it. But the pasta raised the cover, and Big Anthony as well. 
and spilled on the floor of Stregonona's house. Oh, look at all that pasta. Oh my goodness. I'm not sure any of us could eat that much pasta. Stop, yelled Big Anthony, but the pasta did not stop. And if someone hadn't grabbed poor Big Anthony, the pasta would have covered him up. The pasta had all but filled the little house out of the windows and through the doors came the pasta and the pot kept right on bubbling. Look at that house. All that pasta pouring out. Look at Anthony. He could barely stand up at this point. The townspeople began to worry. Do something, Big Anthony, they shouted. Big Anthony sang the magic song again, but without the three kisses, it did no good. By this time, the pasta was on its way down the road and all the people were running to keep ahead of it. We must protect our houses from the pasta, shouted the mayor. Get mattresses, tables, doors, anything. Make a barricade. But even that didn't work. The pot kept bubbling and the pasta kept coming. <gasps> look at that, they built a barricade and look at all that pasta behind the barricade, but it's seeping through. Even a wall can't hold it back. Uh-oh, I wonder if the town's gonna be buried. Oh my goodness, we are lost, said the people and the priest and the sisters of the convent began praying. The pasta will cover our town. <gasps> look at all that pasta. Oh, look at Big Anthony, he can't stop it. And it certainly would have had Stregonona not come down the road home from her visit. She didn't have to look twice to know what happened. And there's Stregonona all the way down in the corner watching all of the people and Big Anthony and all of that pasta all over the place. She knew what happened. She sang the magic song and blew the three kisses. And with a sputter, the pot stopped boiling and the pasta came to a halt. It stopped. Oh, grazie, thank you, thank you, Stregonona, the people cried. But then they turned on poor big Anthony. Straight him up, the men of the town shouted. Now wait, said Stregonona, the punishment must fit the crime. And she took a fork from a lady standing nearby and she held it out to Big Anthony. Huh, there's Stregonona with a fork and she's giving it to Big Anthony. I'll bet you can guess what she wants Anthony to do with this pasta and this fork. All right, Anthony, you wanted pasta from my magic pasta pot, Stregonona said, and I want to sleep in my little bed tonight. So start eating. <gasps> she wants Big Anthony to eat all that pasta. And he did, poor big Anthony, eating all that pasta. You can see how full he is. You know how much, how, how bad you feel when you eat too much, your tummy starts to hurt. Well, big Anthony's tummy sure was hurting him that night. But guess what? Stragonona got to sleep in her own bed. And there's big Anthony filled with all of that pasta. I love this story. I love the magic in the story. And I love that Stregonona didn't yell at him. Stregonona just wanted him to clean up his mess, just like we all want our little ones to clean up their messes. But he had to clean up his mess in a special way. He had to eat all that pasta. Well, I certainly enjoyed that for the about the thousandth time. And I hope that you all liked Stregonona as much as I did. Maybe you'll go and make a pot of pasta, maybe later tonight or maybe tomorrow, and maybe sing a magic song over it. I don't think it'll bubble over, but it might be fun to do that. So thank you for being with us again tonight. I was happy to see some of my friends here, and I hope to see you again very, very soon. Thank you so much, Miss P. We always oh, love Stregonona. You. Had a great time. Love Stregonona. 
and we thank you all thank for you. joining us this evening yeah. and hope you'll join us again and maybe we can bring miss p back for another bedtime story this fall <laughs>